I'm Dr. Tan Yi Ping, Consultant Obstetrician and Gynecologist. Topic today is regarding endometriosis and also the surgical option available and why I think robotic surgery is the best option for endometriosis. And to summarize everything, just as uh, an intro before we talk about surgery itself, I would like to uh, repeat back what are the op- treatment options. So treatment options is three. Three, you know, almost all every talk of mine, everything emphasized on three. So the first treatment option would be um, getting pregnant. Pregnancy itself cures endometriosis. So if you can uh, get pregnant, then your endometriosis is settled. So you do not need to do anything else. But the problem is many people find it difficult to get pregnant. So that is why we have to have the second option, which is medical treatment. Medical treatment is the second option. And last of all, is surgical option. So there are certain situations where women are uh, suitable for medical treatment. But certain situations where women are, they have no choice but to go for surgical treatment. Okay, in what situation where surgery is, uh, is needed? Number one would be, let's say you have tried medicine and it didn't work. Number two, because medicine need time and you really need an immediate cure. Let's say you're trying to get pregnant for many years and you're still not pregnant. So in this type of situation, we normally offer surgery. Because you cannot take medication. Medication may take years. It may take 2 years, 3 years, 4 years. But then, um, if you need to treat your endometriosis and you are not getting pregnant and taking medication takes a long time and you need to get pregnant, then surgery would be an option. And another one more situation for surgery would be if the size of the cyst is very big. Because when size is big, we are always worried about one thing. We are worried about cancer. And because we are worried about cancer, then we have no choice but to go for surgery. So if uh, medical treatment is working and you are not in a rush in getting yourself treated and the cyst is not too big uh, or the adenomyosis is not too big, then you have no rush in getting yourself treated. Then not necessary, you must go for surgery. But you need, still need to be treated. So you can choose medicine. Not everybody needs to go uh, for surgery. But one thing for sure for endometriosis, my general advice is everybody needs treatment. So it's either you go on medicine or you get pregnant or you go on surgery. You don't sit around. You don't sit around waiting for the disease to worsen with time. You don't sit around to wait until your cysts grow bigger. Why we do, cannot just don't do anything? Because there's uh, a lot of women who kind of tell me, Doctor, what if I just don't do anything? I just let it be. You cannot because endometriosis is a disease that will progress. It progresses with time. And if you leave it to progress, that is what we worry. Because it can go to different different organs. Can you imagine if your endometriosis go to your kidney, your liver, you know, going to your lungs, your heart, and then it will make surgery even more difficult. The biggest problem that people worry about endometriosis, people always worry about uh, recurrence. So if you are worried about recurrence, stage 1, 2, 3, 4. You see, we would prefer to operate on you when you are stage 1 or stage 2 or treat you medically as well at stage 1 or stage 2. We don't want to treat you when you are stage 3 to stage 4 because when you reach stage 3 and stage 4, it means that endometriosis has spread to more places. So when it has spread to more places, definitely it's more difficult to treat you. Am I right? If you are going to use medicine to treat at stage 4, you probably need to eat the medicine for so many, so many years, 5 years, 10 years before you can get rid of all the endometriosis. If you are going to use surgery, then it's not going to be a 1 hour, 2 hour surgery. It may be a 4 hour, 5 hour surgery. And surgery can be so difficult that can involve many doctors, not just a gynecologist. I may need to call in a urologist, colorectal surgeon. I may need to call in a cardiothoracic surgeon, depending on where your endometriosis has gone. So number one, the key to treatment is early treatment. Early treatment, easier to treat. So why recurring is because some people, they treat at very late stages. They may treat at very late stages and maybe the disease has reached certain places where it's not easy to treat anymore. Let's say you come in at stage 4 and then you decide to take medicine. But you take medicine for 2 years. 2 years may not be enough for you, but you only took for 2 years. So if you didn't take long enough, the disease will come back very fast. If you decide to do surgery, 
Then depends on what kind of surgery you do. Do you do a surgery to remove everything? Or there are still disease left behind? If stage 1 and 2, most people won't leave behind anything. But if you are stage 3 and 4, sometimes some disease will be left behind. So, if you opt for a surgery that leaves behind something, which means that the disease will come back. Okay? So, early treatment is very important in getting... Uh, uh, in reducing your chances of getting recurring disease because if the disease keep coming back then you end up keep having more surgery so which is no good okay number two is the choice of surgery choice of surgery is very important so there are three uh, ways of doing a surgery you can try um, sorry, before I say choice of surgery, it's choice of treatment. So if you use pregnancy or medical treatment, you must understand that everything can shrink. But it only shrink, it will still be there. Okay, it only shrink, but it will still be there. All the roots are still there and you never remove it. That's why if you go on medical treatment, there's no end to medical treatment. You are supposed to take medicine uh, forever until you menopause. So initially, you may start on stronger medicine like Visain uh, or Lucrine. Or dinosaur, but eventually you need to up you have to change to less not so strong medicine so that you can maintain it forever until you menopause so the choice of treatment also matters so if you choose medical treatment and yet you stop the medicine after two years then of course it's going to come back because medicine doesn't get rid of the disease then the only option that get rid of the disease is surgery but surgery itself they have three types of surgery that you can do you can do an open surgery you can do a laparoscopic surgery. You can also do a robotic surgery. So this is mainly what I'm going to talk to you about. Why it makes a difference. First, you need to understand before I talk about why it makes a difference is endometriosis. You have endometriosis of the ovary, which is the cyst that you get to see on ultrasound. You have endometriosis of the uterus, which is adenomyosis or adenomyoma that you can see on the ultrasound. And thirdly, you have endometriosis of anywhere else except the ovary and uterus so we call it extra ovarian disease extra ovarian endometriosis usually will be in anywhere the favorite place endometriosis go will be to the bowel to the ureter so the bowel and ureter these are the two places that they love to go and the rest they can go bladder all the muscles and nerves around the uterus and of course they can go up to the stomach the liver the diaphragm, the lung, the heart, and in fact, can go anywhere. I've seen it outside at your belly button, at skin area. You know, it can basically go anywhere. But all those other places is a bit rare. Okay, the commonest will be your large bowel, the bowel that sits right behind your uh, ovary, uh, right behind your uterus, and the two ureters that is just behind the uterus. So these are the favorite places of endometriosis and because it can go to so many places so number one the most important thing in doing a surgery is you must be able to identify these places so open surgery has a problem open surgery number one of course you open the tummy you go and see inside you can see whatever you want to see but there's a problem you can only open one place you cannot open the entire tummy so at the end most of the people will just do a horizontal surgery right below your that's where you have your scissor, okay, just above your pelvic bone, so you have a horizontal area. So basically, I make a hole just above the uterus. So when I make a hole just above the uterus and ovary, of course, I can see the uterus and ovary. La. But can I look at other things or not? Is the bowel clear? Is the bladder clear? Is the ureter clear? Is the kidney seen? Is the diaphragm seen? A lot of things are not seen if you make such a small hole. So you cannot be making small holes. You cannot make it small holes. That's why I've seen women who come to me, they say they have previous surgery done. They have previous open surgery. The moment they tell me they have open surgery, I have already deep in my heart, I got feeling that there are disease left behind. Or worse still, when I examine there and I see such a short, such a short, maybe about two or three inches long wound, if you only have such a small little wound in your tummy, impossible to see everything. So if you can't see everything, then of course there will be disease left behind. So the key thing number one in deciding the right choice of surgery is to look at whether the option that you choose can see everything or not. 
And even if I can see the uterus and the ovary, but you must understand when we look with our naked eye, we don't see as well as something that is enlarged and microscopically seen, just like in laparoscopic and robotic. Everything in laparoscopic and robotic, the vision is being enlarged. So they make it big for you to see everything clearer. So that is why it's always better to do either laparoscopically or robotically. Okay? So the main thing in open surgery is because I can't see everything well. I can't see everywhere. And even whatever I see, I see with my naked eye, I can't see it that clearly. So the more I cannot see, the more I cannot get rid of everything clearly. That is why open surgery is never, never, never the best option. Never. Okay, so I have to uh, think that I, I maybe I consider myself a bit... Uh, lucky because I'm not old, not young, you know. People who are older, older doctors, they are mainly open surgeons. They never do laparoscopic or robotic. So they also don't see the advantage of laparoscopic and robotic. And if you're talking about very, very young surgeons nowadays, uh, especially the newer generation, a lot of people are going in laparoscopically straight. They never learn open surgery that well. They straight away go into laparoscopic surgery. And as a result, they also can't tell the difference between open and laparoscopic. So because when I first started as a doctor, everything was open. Then over the years, everything became laparoscopic. And now... The latest, we talk about robotic. So I went through the phases, all three phases of surgery. I, I was trained to do all three methods and that's why I can see the difference. So if you ask me, there's no such thing as open surgery being the best, although a lot of people still believe so, but in actual fact, it's not. So then we look into laparoscopic. So laparoscopic have the advantage because laparoscopic now you can enlarge everything. You put a scope inside and everything can enlarge. So everything can see clearer number one number two the laparoscopic can go usually we put the camera into your belly button and then we go one 360 degree turn so we see the entire tummy so we can see where the endometriosis went whether it went to liver kidney stomach where it, did it go we can go and see everywhere so we don't miss out areas okay so we can see everything and there's another advantage com laparoscopic compared to open when you open a tummy in front, I always describe to a lot of uh, patients, your uterus is seated here. When you come in from the top, you actually see the front of your uterus better. But if you do robotic, because now you are having a camera from your belly button, so you actually see the back of the uterus better. And is front more important or back more important? In endometriosis, it's always the back. As I say, endometriosis loves the bowel behind the uterus. And it also loves the ureter that passes be two sides behind the uterus. So a lot of things are behind uterus. Ovary also behind uterus. So actually what is more important is I need to see the back part of the uterus clearer. So this is what you get when you do laparoscopic or robotic because now your uterus stays here and your camera comes in from your belly button so it focuses behind the uterus which is the more important place so when you look at it you can already see laparoscopy has an advantage because you can see everything okay then another thing is well, then why is it robotic is even better so what is the difference between laparoscopic and robotic Okay, the answer is, the, uh, is like this. When you do robotic, it's different from laparoscopic because again, what you see. You see, in laparoscopic, we put the camera, we can put very, 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 very close to the object. But whatever we see, we see on the TV screen. And the TV screen is usually placed 1 to 2 meters away from our eyes. And what is it about TV screen? Number one. TV screens are 2D image. It's not a 3D image. So if you understand, TV is all 2D. It's not 3D. And number two, you are looking at something very far away. Uh, it depends on how good your TV system is and things like that and how good your eyesight is. So sometimes what we, ha we face is we also don't see that well compared to robotic. Why? Because robotic, number one, it is a microscopic image direct. So it's as though I have two, just like you look into a microscope, it's a binocular view. You see both sides of the scope 
into the tummy so it gives us the impression like as though i am looking at a microscope right in front of your endometriosis i have a microscope that i bring all the way right in front of the endometriosis and i'm looking at it directly and it is 3d because it's two eyes two eyes go in because laparoscopic the scope is one scope if you look at the scope of a laparoscope it is only one scope but in a robotic it's double scope it has two eyes so sometimes uh, when you close one eye a you see clear the other eyes you clear you see blur actually it's because it has two scope and one of the scope may be dirty we need to wipe it so actually it has two scope and now it's as good as we looking at it directly with two eyes so you must understand two eyes definitely clearer than one eye right so laparoscopic is one eye so it's as though you're looking at everything with only one eye so now you get to see everything two eyes so you can see 3d image so 3d image will definitely give you better image and at the same time you actually go all the way up close seeing it 3d so it lab, robotic and laparoscopic is the same i put a scope in i can go 360 degree around the tummy can see the entire tummy but at the same time i also can see everything very very clearly because of the 3d image so because of what we see what we see is clearer, it has a lot of advantage. What are the advantages? Number one, in endometriosis, what do we worry? We worry about things, adhesions. In endometriosis, there are a lot of adhesions. The bowel can stick to the uterus. The ovary can stick to the uterus. The ovary can stick to the bowel. The ureter can stick to the bowel. Everything stick to each other. That is what happened in endometriosis, especially stage two and above. And when everything sticks to each other, the first thing we do in surgery, we need to separate everything. We need to separate everything. In open surgery, we can separate quite easily because we don't use our eyes, we use our hands to feel. We feel uh, this thing should be here, this thing should be there. We feel our, with our hands to separate. That's how we usually do it. But in laparoscopic, we, if we want to do it, we can't feel, right? So we need to see before we can separate. Of course, it can be done. You ask me, I can do it open, I can do it laparoscopic, it can be done. But in robotic, I can go further. What do you mean by I can go further? Like sometimes in laparoscopic, when a lot of things are stuck, especially we call frozen pelvis. Frozen pelvis is advanced stage 4 or stage 4 endometriosis where everybody's everything stick to each other very tightly, tightly packed inside. So most of the time, we will try and separate whether in open surgery or even in la robot, uh, laparoscopic, there is a limit of how much we can separate because they will reach a point where we are not confident to go in because we can't see so well. But in robotic, because we can see so well, we can go further. Because I remember during my early years of robotic surgery, um, I still remember this one little case. Because all this while when I do laparoscopic, if I have a lot of things stuck to each other, I will call the colorectal surgeon here to help me because it involves bowel. So he'll help me to separate the over uh, the uterus, ovary, and the bowel. So this is usually what is done. And typically, every time I call them, I hear the same thing. One. Up to a certain point, uh, they'll ask me, Tan, is it enough? Do I need to go further? Is it enough? You know why? When they say that, you know one thing already. They are quite scared to go further. They are scared to go further. Because we know there are risks. So this one case, what happens is that because my colorectal surgeon doesn't know how to do robotic, this case is meant for robotic. So the first thing I want I did was since I saw everything start to each other and in it's in my early years of doing robotics. So I also not so confident to deal with it myself. So I actually call my colorectal surgeon in. I say since because Robot or laparoscope actually is interchangeable because it still deals with the same three holes in the tummy anyway. So I call my colorectal surgeon to come in to try to do this uh, separation of the bowel from my uterus and ovary so that I can do my surgery. So he do 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 until a point that he say, do I need to go further? Then you know already. He's quite worried. Let's not force him because we don't want to harm the patient in any way. Right? So what I did was I said, I think that's enough. Then I connected the robot. The moment I connected the robot, you know what I saw? I saw so clearly inside that I myself went on further. So since then, 
I don't usually call my colorectal anymore because with robot I can go further I can see so clearly I'm confident to separate everything from my uterus and ovary clearly because I can see it clearly so I can go further and further and further so until everything is really cleared so nowadays if I clear everything fully at the end when I separate everything fully the entire uterus ovary the bowel and the ureter everything go back in place original position as it was when you were born never have I been able to see that whether in open surgery or in most of my laparoscopy in those advanced cases but of course with robotic you can do it so nicely laparoscopic open can do but not up to that standard that the robot can do so that is number one and not only that when we do the separation we have no worry because we see things so clearly we are not worried that we may accidentally cut something else you say the bowel colorectal surgeon always scared to go further because of the risk they scared they may cut the bowel but now you do robot you're not so scared because you can see so clearly where's the bowel where's the ureter where's the uterus where's the ovary so clear so you have no worries so number one number one is the adhesion the adhesion so why robot is the best number one is for the adhesion number two every time when it comes to fertility a lot of mothers are very worried uh, because they want to get pregnant they hear that if you do a surgery for endometriosis you will lose a lot of the eggs as a result of the surgery which is i don't deny it's kind of true because let's say this is a, the cyst in your ovary when we take out the cyst when we peel out the cyst actually when we peel out the whole cyst and then you at the end you have two components this is the cyst this is the ovary so this is your ovary, this is your cyst. And every time when you look at the cyst that you're, you've taken out and you want to send to do testing, you will realize that there's a lot of little, little, little bubbles at there. So which are your eggs that came together with the cyst. Why is that so? It's because we couldn't see the cyst. Um, because we're supposed to only peel the, the cyst layer, the layer, the entire cyst is actually a small little balloon, you know, a small little balloon with uh, fluid inside. So we just want that, that you know, the, 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 the balloon, that layer, you know. But we can't see clearly, so we just strip off one layer. And very often, it's not just one layer, it's the cyst layer plus also your eggs. So that is why there's always this worry about going to do surgery affecting your fertility. But not in robot. Because in robot, now I'm having a microscope right in front, right in front of your cyst. We can see the layer so clearly. Because the cyst layer is actually half, I, it's half a millimeter or even what, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter only. You can never see a 0 0.3 millimeter if with your eyes, you know, like in open surgery. And laparoscopic, it's also not easy because number one is 2D. I can't see the depth of the cyst layer. How thick it is, is am I peeling? It's not so clear in laparoscopic because it's too it's 2D image. And some of my TV is placed one to two meters away from me. So it's not so clear. So ultimately robotic is the way for it. Because when you look at robot, you're having a microscope right in front of the cyst. And this is when I really, really saw this cyst layer, which I finally understood after so many years of being a gynae. I mean, we know about the risk, but we now only finally understood that it can be seen if you do it microscopically. So when you do it microscopically, now you can see the layer, you can peel it out nicely without peeling out the eggs. And when you do that, hardly any bleeding. I don't even need to burn the ovary which saves all the eggs, which is good for fertility. So that's number two. Number three will be the things that, that I mentioned earlier where the endometriosis spread to different, different places. When you spread to different, different places, there is a one situation we call DIE. You know, DIE means die, lah, right? But it's a short for deep infiltrating endometriosis. Deep infiltrating endometriosis so which means that there are a lot of endometriosis actually the ones that are not in the ovary not in the uterus they can be deeply infiltrating so you see a spot there 
You see, there are some doctors who burn the endometriosis. Never burn endometriosis. Useless. Because you see a spot there, you just burn. You're actually burning the superficial. But it can be deeply inside. So when you look at it, you when you see the endometriosis, you need to go all the way in. So when you do all the way in, it's not easy. When we keep digging and digging and digging until we remove everything. We need to dig all the way in and remove everything. That is the ultimate thing we need to do in all this deeply infiltrating endometriosis. Because we don't want to reduce recurrence. We don't want to leave disease behind. But in order to see so deep in, to look at the depth of the thing, again, we need 3D image. So, it can be done. If you ask me, can you do it laparoscopically? Definitely. Can you do it open? No, definitely not. But laparoscopic? Yes. But is there a difference? Yes. Robotic and laparoscopic? Yes, there's a difference. Because now in robotic, I have a 3D image. So I can see the depth better. And when, as I dig deeper and deeper, actually I'm going into more and more important organs inside there that can be very risky. But because now I can see clearer, I also have no risk of going deeper and deeper and deeper. I have no fear of going deeper and deeper and deeper because I can see everything clearly. So if you give me a choice, I want all my endometriosis to be done robotically. Give me a choice. Why? Because I can see everything clearer. I am very confident to do the surgery. I have less fear. If you don't want to do robot, you want to do laparoscopic, I will still do laparoscopic. But I deep inside me, I know that it's never the same. And so I still have a lot of patients that come to me with endometriosis. I'll tell them, if you can do robot, please do robot. But unfortunately, some of them will not do robot. So I still need to do it laparoscopic. But no matter how laparoscopic, it will still be better than open surgery. Okay? So that's how the, the thing goes. As I always say, money, everything comes proportionate. They always ask me, what's the cost of the surgery? I'll tell them, if you want to do a proper surgery, you want to do a proper surgery, that means we're going to dig all the way in. Okay? Dig all the way in and clear everything 100%. If you're just going to remove a cyst, uh, 10 plus, for open laparoscopic, maybe around 15. I wouldn't even do robotic if you're just removing a cyst. It's too simple. It's just a waste of the robot. But if you're going to dig all the way in, first of all, open surgery is not going to be so possible. But it will cost you about 10 plus. Laparoscopic, it will be 20 plus to 30 plus, depending on how much, how advanced is your disease. And robotic will be 30 plus to 40 plus. It's more expensive. It is more expensive for a reason, okay? It's not just because it's technology. Of course, it's technology. Open surgery have existed like almost 100 years already. But if you're talking about uh, laparoscopic surgery, probably in Malaysia, about 20 to 30 years. And if you're talking about robotic in Malaysia, maybe around 10 years. So everything is still is an advancement. Why people do laparoscopic when you already can do open? Because in open surgery, there are a lot of things that we cannot do. So, we created laparoscopic. But in laparoscopic, we also find some problem. So, we created the robot. Of course, new creations are meant for certain reason, And definitely, it's going to give you more adva advantage. So, some people are very scared. Robot, ah, doctor, is it safe? Ah? Robot, ah, safe. Ah? Don't worry, I have not faced any problem with the robot. Robot is robot, but it's not AI. It doesn't have its own brain. It doesn't think on its own. This robot machine is totally controlled by doctor. It's like having a jaw stick, you know. Basically, I have my hand there. I move. Whatever I do with my fingers, the robot finger copy me. That's all. So I'm in control of the robot. So the robot basically copy what I do with my fingers. So that's why, um, don't worry. Don't worry. And if in case, in case, we always say robot is computer. Ma. Computer know how to hang, right? Robot also can hang. Honestly, yes, robot can hang. I have to be very honest. But worst case, what do you get? If my robot hang, I can still do it laparoscopically. As I told you, it's still the same three holes. I use the same three holes to do robot. So if my robot actually hangs, there's no problem. I will just convert it to laparoscopic. No big deal. 
because I can do laparoscopic anyway. If I can only do robot, I cannot do laparoscopic, then you are worried. What if the robot hand, what's going to happen? But I can do laparoscopic. I've done laparoscopy for so many, so many, so many years. I think for almost 20 years now. So I've done laparoscopy for so long. So I have no problem. Because for all this surgery, I can do all open laparoscopic and robotic. So if the robot really going to hang, then I will just have to do laparoscopy. But touch wood, the robot has not hang on me. I mean, I wouldn't say it doesn't hang on me. It does hang on and off, but it's not something that I cannot just reboot and start off. No permanent hang before. So I have no issues with the robot hanging on me. Okay? So those are mainly the thing. So I think basically when I tell a lot of my patients why the robotic is still the best, most of my patients will still opt for robotic unless for some for financial reason they do not do so. Why? Because um, it's expensive ma. So if it's expensive, not everybody can afford. And then most people in Malaysia are basically depending on insurance. So you also need to understand that not all insurance cover robot. There's one insurance company that won't cover robot for non-cancerous cases. So if you have cancer, they'll cover lah. But endometriosis is not cancer. No matter how I write to them, they don't want to cancer. They don't want to cover. It's nothing I can do. But there's one. There's only one. So most of it will still cover. Okay, so um some of you are watching so if you have any question feel free to ask okay you can ask me anything whether regarding robotic or anything regarding endometriosis i'm very happy to answer you okay so in summary we know already robotic is better because if you are talking about pelvic adhesion all the adhesion all the things stick to each other robotic is better in separating so when i can separate everything fully i can have a good view of everything so wherever i see endometriosis i can remove it okay and second advantage is on your ovary if you want to preserve your ovary for fertility robotic is still the best because it can really really differentiate the tiny layer of the cyst compared to the rest of the ovary which cannot be seen in open or in laparoscopic surgery and last of all is for deep endometriosis we want to go deep we want to remove everything from the deepest part of the pelvis this will be best done again with robotic surgery as i generally a lot of time also tell a lot of my patients robotics uh, endometriosis surgery is the most difficult gynae surgery and that is why robotic um, giving us the best vision of everything that's happening it is actually the best option okay Lillian asked, not many hospitals have this robotic surgery, which is true. Not many uh, hospitals have robotic surgery. So if you are opting for robotic surgery, you will have to look for one with uh, uh, robotic surgery. I'm, it's not just in Malaysia. I think Malaysia robotic surgery is mainly either in KL or Kuching. Yeah, I think mainly in KL. KL, we have quite a number of robots already. If I'm not wrong, uh, I think we have about three to one two three four five i know already got five i think one more coming up also soon six there will be six robots in kl already and kuching kuching also has so it's either kl or kuching noise say that you did two time laparoscopic endo stage two and three so one of the reason why your endometriosis came back sometimes so it's not just about whether you do open laparoscopy or robotic but did you remove everything so that is another thing as i say endometriosis is one of the most difficult surgery to do so not everybody will remove everything and if they just remove the cyst you will know one when you do an endometriosis surgery i just look at your report the your what is written in your report is it just ovarian cyst and then the result endometriotic cyst then your doctor will need to cut your cyst then what about the other endometriosis around your bowel your ureter and everywhere else if you're stage 2 and 3, you have a lot of endometriosis everywhere else already. So you need to remove everywhere else. If you do not remove everywhere else, then the disease will come back very fast. Then you end up having surgery again and again and again. And if you look at my previous uh, video on endometriosis surgery, uh, endometriosis in general, to prevent endometriosis from coming back, as just now I mentioned, number one is early treatment. You need to treat early. Number two is the method of treatment, whether you use medical or surgical. Number three, now I told you for surgery also, you need to think about what type of surgery you choose. And actually another factor is in your surgery, did you remove everything or you just remove the cyst and leave behind the deep endof deep infiltrating disease behind? Do you just remove the cyst and leave behind all the endometriosis on the bowel and the ureter? So that is the third question. And number four, 
after the surgery, did you stop your menses? Did you go on long-term preventive measures? These are all the things that I discussed in my previous uh, video on what are the long-term preventive measures. Noi asks, how many laparoscopy can you do? Of course, ideally, you shouldn't be doing so many. Lah. Like previously, I also had this lady. She went to the same doctor three times to do the surgery. And then it just went back to the same doctor and then every two years she's operating. When you listen to that, you obviously know the doctor didn't remove everything. And then why she keep going back to the same doctor? Because if the doctor cannot remove everything, that means the doctor do not do such surgeries because endometriosis surgery is a very high risk surgery. Not everybody uh, do such surgeries. They do. They do the surgery. They remove the cyst only. But they, re they do not take out deep infiltrating endometriosis. So if you look for a doctor who doesn't remove deep infiltrating endometriosis, then you're going to leave disease behind. Of course, it's going to come back very fast. If not, actually, there's no limit in how many laparoscopy you do. But I really do hope that you do not keep doing. So choose your doctor wisely. Choose your method of surgery wisely. Is there any effect if I keep doing laparoscopy? There's only one problem. If it's on the cyst, on the ovary cyst, as I told you, ovarian cyst, when we peel out the cyst wall, especially if you are not doing robotic, very often when you peel off, there is still eggs on the cyst. So if you keep doing that, you peel off more and more eggs, then at the end, no more eggs. Oh. Okay? So that's one of the risks that we find that some people who do too many surgery, they immediately end up in menopause. Why? Because they took out all their eggs already. Shan... As Shan Farm asks, what are the first few signs of knowing you have endometriosis? It's very simple. Any form of discomfort you feel during menses, that's endometriosis. We don't care what kind of discomforts. Is it period pain? Is it pain during urination? Is it diarrhea? Is it gastric? Is it vomiting? Is it headache? Is it tiredness? Whatever you feel during menses, that's endometriosis. Okay? Fatin asks, is it too expensive? It's about 10,000, 10 to 12,000 more expensive than laparoscopic surgery. And also depending on your insurance, if your insurance cover, that actually is not really an, insur an issue for those people who have ins medical insurance. Okay, Jessica Lu asks, uh, which insurance company do not cover? Although I like to say these type of things, but I don't like to mention names. If you want to know, you can come and see me directly. Okay, I will let you know. There's only one insurance company anyway. So the chances of you being having that one insurance company is not that high, right? Okay, Gayatri, you're asking about something else. Um, does it involve three holes? Both laparoscopy and robotic is the same. We involve three holes in the tummy. Jeannie asks, the recovery process are the same for both laparoscopy and robotic? Yes, because the number of holes are the same. Okay, so um, although some people will claim that robotic surgery recovers slightly faster than laparoscopic, but I think the difference is not significant. Lah. Because no so matter how, it's still three holes. Let's say if laparoscopic, you take five days before you can walk around, jump around and drive a car. Maybe robotic four days. Lah. Okay, the difference may be just one day. There's slight difference in the recovery time is because in robotic surgery, there's a difference between the robot hand and the human hand. In laparoscopic, it's a human hand. So sometimes when we are pulling things and what, we actually use a lot of force. And when we use a lot of force, we actually pull on your tummy a lot. So your tummy can also, tummy muscle also can get hurt because of us pulling. But the robot is different. It just goes in and out and it has a hand at the end so it doesn't do a lot of uh, pulling and pushing on your tummy muscle because there's also a fulcrum effect so the the robot lies as we have we call fulcrum effect so let's say this area is where the skin is so the robot on, moves on a fulcrum so it does not pull on your muscle but if it's a human you know or sometimes you want to pull things out we will pull and then we will definitely uh, drag your muscle wall together and that is why in uh, there's a bit more muscle like you no know, uh, muscle injury like when you get punched by someone or get pinched by someone on your muscle so this one will affect your recovery slightly more so that one two days difference probably okay so yeah, robotic is definitely faster. But some people, they may not feel so like, for example, let, let's say you previously have a laparoscopic surgery done, but the doctor only removed the cyst. 
and now you come for come and see me and you do a robotic and because now my aim is not just a cyst I want to remove all the endometriosis behind the uterus at the bowel at the ureter so sometimes you will find that this robotic surgery may be more painful than your previous laparoscopic surgery it's not because it's robotic or, or laparoscopic but this time we did a much bigger surgery because we removed more area in your pelvis so it's not because of uh, which uh, surgery you choose but let's say we do the same thing if I'm going to do remove just a cyst in a laparoscope and a robot then definitely robotic surgery the recovery is faster okay Lillian asked which are the hospitals with robotic uh, what I'm doing now I do my robotic surgery in Sunway Hospital but it's not like you go Sunway Hospital and see any gynae you get to do robotic surgery because robotic surgery needs special license at the moment in uh Sunway, I'm probably the only only active robotic surgeon doing gynecology surgery. There are a lot of people doing robot, but they're not doing gyne. I'm the only gyne that's actively doing in Sunway. So other than Sunway, we have Prince Scott, we have Glen Eagles, and also uh, HKL, UITM, and I think UPM is getting soon. So the universities are getting it. HKL have it for a long time already. Uh, HK is one of the first hospital to have robotic surgery in Malaysia anyway. So yeah, our government hospital pioneer everything. So these are the, the things. Okay, but it's not as simple as which hospital have a robot because not everybody in the hospital will be licensed to do. Robot is in very fun is is slightly different compared to open surgery and laparoscopy. Anybody trained, get certificate can do, but robotic surgery, the surgeons who can operate the robot is in a way controlled by the robotic company. So the robotic company, which is an international company, decides who can do and who cannot do. Okay, so Hanyi Tan asked, did my endometriosis surgery using robotic one and a half years ago with me, but you have some discharge? No, your brown discharge, nothing to do with robotic surgery, uh, endometriosis, I don't think so. It could be due to polyp or it could be due to any of the medication that you are on. Because uh, after, if you have done robotic with me, most of the time after endometriosis surgery, I will usually put you on some form of medication, either a Mirena or something else that could cause the brownish discharge. Brownish discharge can also be cause of endometrial polyp. So it's best you get yourself checked again. Amy Jen asks, Dr. Tan, if suspect got endomyosis, is it high risk might have endometriosis? Yeah, they are from the same family. So when you have endomyosis, most likely you have endometriosis. Sila Wati asks, if I have some this brownish spotting after remove cyst through open surgery, is it normal? You're not supposed to have that. I mean, it's okay to have it with the, within the first one month of surgery, yes. But after all the wound recover, no. If you have that, you may have other problems. You need to see a gynae to check. Amy asks, menstruation, migraine every month. Could it be a symptom of endometriosis? It could be a symptom of endometriosis. It could be a symptom of stress. Two possible causes. Xuan Liu asks, before surgery, how do we know the stage of the endometriosis? There's no way you can do. There's no way you know how, what stage of your endometriosis. You only know during surgery. In which situation, during surgery, you need to remove your uterus or ovary? Normally, for me, I don't. I cannot speak for all doctors, but I don't. I usually ask patient beforehand and if it's planned not to do, we won't do. Okay, I don't, I cannot speak for other doctors, okay, but because I hear a lot of people, they're very scared to do surgery because they hear rumors that uh, they go and do a surgery and then doctor end up removing their uterus even though they didn't re uh, agree to it in the first place. Uh, I don't want to speak on behalf of other doctors, but normally as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, I will have informed you earlier. If I did not inform you, normally I don't do it, okay? I don't remove uterus or ovary i may remove your appendix because endometriosis can affect appendix and I, yes i do remove appendix but i don't remove uterus or ovaries i am one very conservative doctor i like to keep people's uterus and ovaries and not remove a lot of doctors will remove the ovaries, ovary and uterus when the endometriosis is everywhere why because just now as i mentioned not everybody can remove deep infiltrating endometriosis. That is the most difficult surgery to do for all gynecologists. And it requires a long training, years and years of training before you can reach that level where you dare to do deep infiltrating endometriosis. So if you do not know how to do deep infiltrating endometriosis, just remove the ovary and uterus and that's it, settle. Because without uterus and without ovary, the disease will never come back. That is the easy option. 
Just like I have one case last week. This one case is a very interesting case I want to ex- dis- uh, share with all of you. This lady is already in her 40s, 10, more than 10 years married with no baby, tried IVF and everything. Has seen a lot of gynae, nobody told her she got endometriosis. Then one day, when she go for a medical checkup, she's, somebody told her that her kidney already died. One of her kidney already died. Then, when she saw the urologist for the kidney, the urologist told her, uh, the commonest reason for this to happen usually is endometriosis. So the urologist asked, sent her for ultrasound scan, MRI scan, didn't see any endometriosis. But the urologist did send her to see a gynae. At that time, that wasn't me. They sent to another gynae where the urologist was working. So it was a different hospital. It wasn't Sunway. Then the gynae told her that yes, most likely it's endometriosis. But we can't see it because endometriosis, you can may not be able to see your ultrasound or MRI scan, especially deep infiltrating endometriosis, you cannot see. You only can see endometriosis of the ovary and the uterus. Anywhere else, it's not easy to find it. Sometimes can see, but very rare. Most of the time, cannot see. But the fact that the kidney already died, this endometriosis is very bad. And the fact that the kidney already died, this is definitely a deep infiltrating endometriosis. Basically, infiltrated into the ureters and the kidneys and kill off, knock off the kidney already. So this doctor also told her, uh, in order to solve your problem, you need to remove both your ovaries and uterus. Because when you remove ovary and uterus, endometriosis will regress. You cure the in- endometriosis indirectly. And the doctor also feels that she's in her 40s, might as well just take out everything. But unfortunately, she has no children and she's not going to give up hoping that she will conceive one day. So, she came to see me because somebody recommended her to see me because I do robotic. So, when she came and see me, I operated her on her last week. When we went in, before we went in, we didn't see any endometriosis as usual. But when we went in, when we went in, superficially, you see some spots here and there. Nothing too amazing. But as you start digging deeper, as I told you, you need to dig deeper. There was a big chunk of endometriosis on the ureter. Big chunk. It cannot be seen superficially even when we do the scope. It's when we try to remove the endometriosis. Like I remove one layer, I see inside still got. So I go and dig another layer out and dig another layer out. Big chunk of endometriosis on the ureter. So the lesson behind this case is even if your ultrasound is normal, it doesn't mean that you don't have endometriosis. And when you have endometriosis, you really need to be able to dig deep. Because if you cannot do that, then your other option is to remove uterus and ovary. That is why you often see a lot of doctors say, because the endometriosis is everywhere, they need to remove the ovary and uterus. Because they know, if I don't remove the ovary and uterus, and the endometriosis that is everywhere is still around, the cyst will come out very fast. Half a year, one year. So that's why we need to go all out to remove everything. And that should be the ultimate aim in endometriosis surgery. But unfortunately, not every doctor uh, can do that. If you ask me 10 years ago, I also cannot do that. So, it's something that we have to pick up as we go along. And that is why and robotic came as a very good tool to me because to do that, robotic makes things safer and easier. Easier and safer, that's the best thing about robotic surgery. I can do the same thing in laparoscopic, but I usually would hope that my patient would choose robot. Actually, I seriously really hope that they choose robot. You know, when MCO came in the first three weeks of uh, the April, I had no robot because my robot had to be put aside because of logistic reason. Well, I was so sad. But when last two weeks, when my robot came back again, I'm so happy. Finally, I could see so clearly when I do the surgery. The vision that we can see on robotic is marvellous. And because it's so clear, surgery is safer. And because it's safer, we can go further. You understand? Leela Daniel say, uh, Robotic, is it ablation or excision? Robotic can do ablation or excision. Both laparoscopic also can do ablation or excision. So it's not whether you want to, which method of operation ends, uh, does ablation or robotic, no, uh, or excision, no. The choice of ablation or excision is the surgeon. That's your doctor there, to excise that one is the whole key thing is he trained 
is he fully trained to exercise? Most of us, not many doctors in Malaysia train to exercise and most of us who exercise, we got our training all from France because that's the main center. The most popular robotic uh, endometriosis surgeon is not robotic surgeon, it's an endometriosis surgeon, the most popular. He's in France, he's a French man and uh, most of us learn from him. So when we go there, we undergo the training over the years, we pick it up. So the, the whole training also take years to get to where I am today. So with robot, you can do excision better because it's safer. Vision is better. And Rachel Po asked, taking preventive measure after laparoscopy can help to prevent endometriosis and adenomyosis, but not fibroid, right? Yes, your question is yes. Um, not fully, depends on what kind of uh, preventive measures you're taking. Preventive measures are always categorized as two. One is medical and one is non-medical. The non-medical one will help you with fibroid as well. But medical one, then uh, no. Because medication that um, prevent endometriosis cannot prevent fibroid. And yep. Lila Daniel asks, will Marina cause the period to stop after a year plus using it? Depends on individual. Some people yes, some people no. But even if stop, it is not menopause, so you don't worry. Amy asks, if uh, endometrial polyp and endometriosis or edema, is it related? It's uh, not related, it's not the same disease. But it has more or less the same origin. That's why they like to come together. A lot of endometriosis patients got polyp. And a lot of polyp people got endometriosis. They may not be the same disease. It's totally not the same disease because it ends up with a different problem. Endometriosis tend to give you ovarian cancer. Endometrial polyp gives you uterus cancer. So it's a totally different disease. But the cause of it can be more or less the same thing. So yeah, it's irrelated in a way, but it's not the same disease. Okay, I, can, I guess I've answered all the questions here today. So... Thanks again for uh, listening to my video today. So do feel free to put in your questions later. So that's all for today. Yes, that's all for today. And thank you.